Models, databases, and active record. Our Rails app uh, actually does something. It responds to requests, but it doesn't yet know how to work with the database. In practice, nearly every application persists data to a database. There are certainly use cases where you don't need to do this, but more often than not, you will be working with a database. So we kind of want to ask ourselves is, how should we store and retrieve what we say record-oriented structured data? What we're talking about here are resources in our applications, things like movies, if we're dealing with a movies application. Probably at some point, you would have an application that deals with users. They might have reviews. There might be all sorts of other things. Have I seen movies and so on? And what we want to explore is what is the relationship between our data that lives in the database and how it is manipulated in our program language and in our framework, in this case, Ruby and Rails. One thing that we have to be uh, aware of is when we're working with code in our Rails app, we're working with objects that exist in memory. Uh, like most languages, uh, we'll see this, but Ruby provides you know, a default uh, printing of an object. If we have some movie object in memory, how should we work with that object persisted in the database? Active Record's job is going to be to take that object and convert it into a format that can be stored into the database and some way to deserialize that object from the database. So with, with Rails, we're going to have an object typically named movie. Capital M, in this case, is going to be our class name. Class names always start with a capital letter. It's going to have some methods as attributes, in this case, name and rating. It might have a title, a description, and so on, release dates. Uh, each of these operations that we might want to do that we call CRUD, create, read, update, and delete, will be provided by Active Record and we're going to use common active record patterns to update those attributes. So what might this look like in our database? We could imagine that if we're talking about movies uh, in a relational database, what we have are typically referred to as records. Each of these records will hopefully have some kind of ID. We'll talk about how IDs work. In this case, they're going to have a rating, a title, and a release date. Each of these things, this is just text, more text. This thing is a date which will be useful bits of information. And we could have as many of these as we might need. Each model in our Rails app is going to get its own database table. So if we have movies, we'll have one table for movies. If we have reviews, we'll have a separate table for reviews. Each row in this table will map to one instance of our model. So when we load movie with ID 2, that's going to be one instance of a model. When we load a different movie, it's a different instance of our class. Rails is going to map column names to methods that exist in our model. So in this case, we we'll expect that we'll have at least four, probably a lot more, methods like ID, title, and release date that exist uh, on our model. And Rails, because every model needs a primary key, Rails will help us generate that ID column automatically. So we'll see as we get into learning about how the database interface works that we don't actually need to do too much to make sure that we have primary keys. Uh, within our database. All of this structure we call a schema, which is going to be the definition for how our database looks and operates. What are not just the columns, but what are the types of data that those columns operate on? What are the names of the tables? And later we'll expand the schema to talk about the relationships between different bits of data. One of the things to just be aware of, we're not going to write a ton of SQL, but when we talk about create, read, update, and delete operations or CRUD, each of these maps to define semantics in SQL, which is the primary interface that all sort of modern relational database systems use. So the structured query language uh, is, uh, is sort of the, op, uh, the format that, that databases work with. And Active Record's job is to translate our commands into SQL queries that the database knows how to operate. So in this course, you're not going to be writing much SQL, but it's useful to sort of be aware of the types of things that, uh, that SQL supports. And in your apps, when they get more complicated, Rails, of course, provides the hooks for that. So in SQL, we have an insert into command. This is our create operation. We provide columns and values. And we are not going to get into the specifics of SQL, but it's helpful to be aware of what's there. We can, in SQL parlance, select data from a table and optionally apply some filtering. We can update data 
using, of course, the update command. We tell SQL what columns need to be updated and what rows to apply it to. And helpfully enough, we can delete data and tell SQL which data specifically to delete. All of these commands are pretty basic SQL, but there's a lot of syntax here. And so the goal of using a tool like Active Record will be for Rails to translate a more simplified version of our commands into proper SQL query. And importantly, it will handle things for us uh, like safety and security such that we don't actually run into vulnerabilities. So what does the SQL look like from Ruby? So every, every model in our Rails app that interacts with the database is a subclass, either directly or indirectly, of Active Record base class. In, in many Ruby apps now, this is called application model, but it, it indirectly inherits from Active Record base class. And the goal here is to connect this model to a particular table that lives on a database. And that's going to provide the operations for CRUD that we have in our database. How do we know what to, which model to map to which table? Rails, helpfully enough, defines a very common convention, which is the model movie. Notably, the model names are a capital M and are singular, maps to the table named movies with a lowercase m and a plural. Rails will help you when you have things like mouse and mice. You can have a mouse model with a mice table, and Rails actually knows how to handle that one. So if you're concerned about pluralization, it's been a solved problem there. Database columns, like rating and title, are mapped to methods that exist uh, on our model. And remember in Ruby that because every a.b is a method call on an instance of a class, when we update and set things like titles, we're calling methods that exist on our, in this case, movie object. We're not, in this case, modifying any sort of instance variables in our movies model. So we'll demo this in a moment. Well, what does this look like from Ruby? Naturally, there's a few different ways that uh, we can interact with this, but all we need to do is inherit from the right class. A fully complete Rails model needs only one line of code that inherits from either application record or, or active record base class, and that provides the functionality to say something like movie.new is an object, which is an in-memory instance of our movie, we can say movie.title is equal to some value. Or in a fairly sort of common Ruby pattern, we can pass our data as arguments to our method. So movie.new can be called with arguments that are the particular, in this case, columns of our objects. In this case, we have title and rating. Of course, we could have as many attributes here uh, as we need. We'll demo this in a moment. But right now, one thing to be aware of, when we create records, we're creating them in memory. And so as we create records, we have to be careful about when we persist them to the database. We always must call save or save bang in active record to save that data to the database. The, the exclamation mark versions, like we mentioned before, can note that something is about a dangerous operation. Those methods will throw an exception. And if you're not careful, your app will then reveal that exception to the user. Of course, sometimes, we want to create a new record and save it all in one go. Rails helpfully provides a method called create, which wraps new and save into a single uh, controller action. Notably here, we didn't specify things like an ID key in our model. And so once we've created our model, Active Record helps us by automatically asking our database to generate a new ID. And Rails, we can check on this by asking for our x.id or object.id, and we have methods like new record question mark, which tell us whether or not a record has been persisted to the database. All of these methods, of course, are available with active record base class. They're not true of all Ruby objects, but they should be true of all objects in our application that interact with the database. Briefly, it's worth mentioning that in the realm of software engineering, Active record is not the only format that exists with the database. There are many alternative patterns. The most common pattern that is worth being aware of is a pattern called data mappers. Data mappers add a level of indirection between your model and the database. In this case, active record provides both the model instance, right, movie, and the ways in which movie is persisted to the database. A data mapper 
separates that one level by inserting a different class that turns a database connection into a model object. This has some advantages. Frameworks like Google App Engine, Python SQL Alchemy use this. It allows you to do some actions that remove the database from the equation. At the same time, that makes it harder potentially to take advantage of certain database features that might exist. And we'll see the advantages that the Active Record interface provides in the next chapter, particularly when we talk about associations. But it's worth being aware that this is not the only option in town.